Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here, once again with another video on The Flash Season 4, and this is going to be my review for episode 15 of this season, otherwise entitled Enter Flash Time. But of course, before we get into the rest of the video, there will be spoilers, and there's uh, some big things to talk about, I guess. Uh, so if you've not watched the episode, go watch it and come back to this later on. But if you are continuing on, be sure to drop a like on the video to show your support. Let me know in the comments section down below what was your favorite part of the episode, what didn't you like too much, and what things did you have issues with. Just let me know in the comments. And of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. So last episode was a pretty big episode in regards to, I guess, Ralph, which does continue into this episode, even though Ralph isn't present. But we saw Devote change bodies, and that's basically it. Because this episode is pure filler for the most part, apart from maybe one or two scenes at the end, uh, it doesn't really tie into larger parts of the season. But one thing this episode does, which I actually do like when they do it in these episodes, because it gets you thinking, okay, how does this tie to what's happening else in the episode? Where is this going to show up in this episode and stuff like that? And that is when we start uh, later on this episode, when uh, we see Barry and Iris talking to each other and Barry's already entered flash time. We do find out like after that scene that it was uh, Barry in like real time. Yeah, in real time, like an Arrowverse time, that was eight minutes and 50 seconds after the proper start of the episode. Um, so Barry, obviously after Barry's really gone into flash time, that's probably like eight minutes and 49.92 seconds, I guess. One other thing that is revealed that's uh, related to the rest of this season, I guess, that I forgot to like sort of re refer to earlier on, is that we learned that DeVoe has been popping in and out of this dimension, or that polka dimension, all over Central City, which is understandable. We've seen him pop in and out a few times, but, you know, Cisco gives us a bit of a time frame. He's been doing it for three years, which I don't think anyone was, was, anyone, sorry, was expecting. Um, so that's actually crazy if you think about it, but... If you think about it again, he's had to plan and orchestrate all these bus metahumans coming together so it would make sense if he was popping in and out at different points over a certain uh, long period of time. So that was very interesting to find out and I'm wondering where that goes, you know, onto later on in this season. We see Jessie quick back and we see that she's actually brought to this earth due to the fact that Harry had sent her like an apology box, I think it was called, but with no apology inside. So Jessie goes up, like returns to earth or comes to earth one is like, like, what's this? This is like sending an envelope, addressing it to me and not putting a letter inside. It's a bit weird. Um, but he actually, uh, but Jessie actually wants Harry to sort of deal with her mother's death and obviously Harry's wife's death. Um, which Harry hasn't dealt with. Basically, when she died, he just moved on and just didn't didn't grieve at all while Jesse did as well, uh, but not to the extent that she wanted to. But really, the premise of this episode started with the Argus shootout, which is around like a bomb, where we have the eco-terrorist known as Veronica Dowell, uh, otherwise known in the comics as Hyrax. They don't say Hyrax in this episode. Towards the end of the episode, they do say Veronica Dale and Eden Call, which is from the comics as well. So it's all related to the comics, even though they, don't, they, they wait till the end to like all tie it in uh, together, I guess. Uh, but essentially this nuclear bomb goes off and uh, Barry has to, as you would guess by the title, enter flash time. And due to this, we do see Jay Garrick return. And he actually has like an interesting arc in this episode, if you want to call that, but we'll get onto that later because there is some things you could tie in there, which we'll talk about then. But just having the flash, or a couple of flashes uh, in this episode, or speeds, as might I say, was really cool. You know, it'd be cool if we had Wally, but he's on the wave ride at the moment, having a good time. So I think Wally's in a better situation than these uh, these uh, speedsters. Now, obviously, Barry's in flash time, and we have the other two speedsters who can move basically at the same speed, but who can't, you know, the non-speedsters. So Barry's able to bring them in like we saw him do to Iris in episode 10 of this season. I've been calling it like a speed falls bubble, so I'm just going to continue using that term. So he, we see him bring, firstly, Cisco, because this is why I'm bringing it up, because I will talk about something else related to this later on. But essentially, Cisco can't keep up with this speed because he's not used to moving at this speed, so he can't really catch his breath. And so he's getting tired very, very easily. Um, so really, when Barry takes someone that isn't a speed star, into flash time, they have limited time before they're tired out. And even the speedsters in general are going to get tired out over time because they're moving really, really quickly for a long period of time. There's only so much they can handle. But essentially, a lot of people did have issues with Iris with this thing because a lot of people thought that she lasted longer than the others, which didn't make sense. But it will explain why that makes sense later in the video when we get onto more topics revolving around Iris. Now going into this episode, a lot of people had a theory about the bomb and whether they should put it in the Speed Force because, you know, a lot of people, like the Speed Force is this like ridiculous amount of energy you think would be able to contain the bomb and not really do much damage. But it's get, it's revealed, might I say, by Jay Garrick that, you know, that's basically the complete opposite. It could destroy the Speed Force. It would most likely destroy the Speed Force. 
and everyone with a connection would lose their speed instantly. And you think, okay, well, all these villainous speedsters will lose their speed, but then you've got Barry who would lose his speed, and he knows that, okay, well, you know, I'm dealing with threats on a daily basis who aren't speedsters. And Jay Garrick would know that as well, Jesse Quick would know that as well. So, you know, destroying the speed force is not the best option, so maybe try and find something else to do. But as I did say, the speedsters were getting fatigued, so we saw Jay Garrick tap out first, which makes sense. He's the most elderly of these speedsters. Uh, we could already tell from previous seasons he wasn't as fast as other speedsters on the show, so I wasn't too surprised that he, you know, tapped out. But it actually leads on to something later in the episode, which is very interesting, and I'm sure many will theorize about uh, what's going on with him uh, later on after this episode. Now, personally, I think running back in time made sense for this, this premise. I think it made sense because all they would have to do is that they're frozen at this time. So it's basically half a second after Hyrax has pressed that button, not even half a second, a millisecond or whatever it was, or whatever the, the term was, that amount of time after she's pressed the detonation button, surely you can run back literally three seconds and stop it from pressing that. You would not think that would do too much damage to the time stream. Like seriously, I think that was a logical option and it would make sense to do it. Like if you're willing to put the bomb in the speed force, to blow that up and risk everyone losing speed, running back three seconds is more plausible than any other option that was available at the time. And I don't know why it was not used. Um, it makes sense to me. You know, you're not gonna do that much damage uh, to anything. Jesse wouldn't be affected because she's not from our earth. Jay wouldn't have been affected. How much damage could you do? How much damage could you do? I can tell you, not much. So I'm surprised that was not an option at all. Um, well, it was an option, I guess, but Barry just shot it down. I'm surprised it was not thought about more uh, clearly and actually done in this episode. But let's move on. Now, Jesse's words to Harry were really nice. I think Jesse and Harry had the best scenes in this episode by far. Um, but it almost, like, I think even Jay had uh, scenes in this episode which almost hinted at death. So I hadn't talked about maybe Jesse Quick dying in this episode just due to Violet Bean's schedule and stuff and her maybe not being able to appear in The Flash. And usually with these Arrowverse shows, if an actor looks like they're not going to be available for a certain amount of time, they tend to kill the character off or put them in like a position where it makes sense why they aren't showing up in the future, uh, in future episodes, episodes, might I say. Um, so I'm surprised that Jesse Quick didn't die, but I guess they didn't want to deal with, say, Harry's wife's death and go over all of that and then just have Jesse Quick die. So I can understand why they didn't go down that route. But it was interesting just seeing Jesse freeze next to Harry, just like, you know, was fatigued and just just froze next to her dad. I thought it was actually a really nice and sort of, you know, powerful moment at the same time. Now, we'll move on to Iris for this episode. Um, once again, I said it in my trailer breakdown, I knew she would be like the reason that Barry, that she would come up for the reason as to why the bomb stops because you could just tell from the trailer how sweaty Barry was that this was basically towards the end of the episode or towards the end of the, the whole dealing with the bomb situation. So you could tell that she was gonna come up with it. As I've said in previous videos, Iris's Google for the show, and it's not Candace Patton's fault, it's not really Iris's fault as like just your character in general. I don't know why the writers do this, um, because people are obviously frustrated about it on social media, and you, why do it? It makes no sense to me, like I want to like Iris, I want to really enjoy the character, I like the character in the comics, I like the character in seasons one, two, maybe not three, um, but definitely seasons one and two, I like the character. It's, it can't be that. She's not a hard character to write, which I don't understand why they don't do this. And it's not me having a go at Iris or Candace Patton. It's more to the writers. You can tell there's been a, a writer shift, just to Iris's arc. It just seems like the writers that were, with, uh, that were with her in previous seasons have just left because the character has had this massive shift, which doesn't make sense. So, uh, they have to do something with her. One thing that I will defend um, the writers for with Iris is that a lot of people were complaining about how Iris lasted longer when, like, Barry grabbed her and entered flash time with her. Um, the reason that Iris lasted longer was because Barry had got tired, so he was not moving as fast, which in turn would allow Iris to be in flash time longer and not get tired and stuff like that. So, sure, she might have, she should have started like breathing heavily, maybe like going, whoo, I'm a bit tired, and maybe sweating, maybe like Jay Garrick was and how Cisco and Kayla went before they, you know, paused again. Um, but yeah, she would have been able to last longer because Barry had slowed down at that point. But yeah, we get that, um, the, the genetic sphere, the genetic marker sphere, whatever you want to call it, that we saw back in episode one being used to bring the speed force storm, um, to follow Barry to attack the nuclear bomb. So I guess that made sense. But honestly, that whole situation, I was let down. I thought there would have been 
I just thought this episode would have been better. I'll get into the review later on, but just like that ending just felt a bit dull to me. Um, might have just been me. I don't know. But as I was saying, Jay Garrick, um, you know, he's fatigued earlier on. This actually leads to him essentially retiring and he's going to train another speedster who we find out is actually a female. So is that going to be like the Jesse Quick replacement going into next season? Um, I'm interested to find out who it is. A lot of people might say, oh, okay, is it Dawn Allen? Probably not. It might be someone else from the comics. I'm interested to see, like, especially nowadays, like there's Mina Darwin, I think it is, from the Flash Rebirth comics. Um, there's even a couple more that they could use, or it could be a completely new character. I don't know what they're going to do there. Or it could even be like Jenny Ognatz. I don't know what they would do there, but I'm very interested to find out who this female speedster is, this new rookie speedster on Earth 3. Um, and hopefully, I don't think we'll see it anytime this season. I think it's more for next season and they'll dive deeper into that. I don't know, we could get it at the end of this season at some point. I don't know, they're only filming episode, I think 18 or 19 at the stage. So there's more stuff that could be revealed later on. Another Jesse and Harry moment, like Jesse hearing her father's thoughts and hearing her mother was a really nice moment. As I said, I think Jesse and Harry had the nicest moments in this episode. They usually do when you have Jesse and Harry in the same episode, just because they're usually conflicted, but then they have those nice moments as well. Um, and that was just a really nice moment. And because I don't think we're going to be seeing Jesse for a while, it was good that she left off on a really nice moment as well. And just Harry dealing with that as well was a, a good scene to have. So... Jesse and Harry, probably the MVPs of the episode, you have to say, so we'll give them a bit of a clap. One interesting reveal, though, is that Caitlin actually remembers something that Killer Frost did. The fact that Killer Frost was worried about her when she, like, entered Flash time and thought she was going to die. So, once again, they're progressing that Caitlin story slowly. They always take these breaks with the Caitlin story, or Caitlin Killer Frost storyline, which makes people forget that it's going on. Um, it needs to be a bit more consistent. I think that's one thing that Caitlin's writing needs to be done. It's nothing with... Danielle Pannebaker, I think, does an amazing job with what she's given. The same with Candace Patton. I think she does an amazing job with what she's given. Um, but just the female writing on the show is really bad. Like, Jesse's in for one episode and has the best writing I think a female character's had for a while. So, they need to work on that. Kayla needs more consistency. And by consistency, I mean, it's not just one episode, then we take a five-episode break and here's some more Caitlyn. Like, do it every couple of episodes, or even in every episode, plan a little bit of it, of it in there. Just be more consistent, because people forget about it. And just seems a bit random when it comes up again. So maybe fix that. But then to finish off the episode, we see Dawn Allen return. And obviously, you know, it was good to see her back. Uh, I think the last time we saw her was a couple of episodes ago. I can't remember the specific episode, to be completely honest. I think it was episode 11, I want to say. We'll go episode 11, because that's what I think it was. Um, but anyway, we see her look a bit sinister. As if something is up. As if she's maybe connected to DeVoe. Episode 20 of this season is called Therefore She Is. Maybe she comes back for that. I'd probably expect her in one more episode before that episode if she's coming back for that one. Sorry, my dog's barking at the moment. Um, maybe episode 17 or 18. I don't know, one of those. But yeah, something's up with her. We might do a video on it on the weekend. But um, yeah, something shifty is going up with that. But let me know what you think about all of uh, the Dawn Allen stuff in the comments. But overall, I thought this episode was a bit disappointing. I'm not going to lie, like it was still a good episode, but just like the expectation, I don't like going into things with expectations and I blame myself for this. I went into this episode thinking it was going to be really, really good. Like at least a nine out of 10, just going by what we've, uh, the previews it had, what the actors were saying going into this episode. This is one of the few episodes where the actors have previewed an episode and like given detailed thoughts about how the fans will react to it and stuff like that. So personally, I just think I was a bit disappointed, but as I said, I think it's because I went in with too high expectations. So I blame myself a bit for that, but I also blame the show because it should have been better. Like it should have been a better reveal with this premise. And they even teased this uh, title of Into Flash Tom like ages ago to hype people up. Um, and I just didn't think it delivered to the maximum ability it could have done. Um, still a decent episode. Um, but just did eventually at the end of it, apart from the Harry and Jesse stuff, it just feel just did feel sorry like your typical filler episode, which I have to say is sort of disappointing. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I don't know if you would have. I was a bit down, I guess. So I was just a bit disappointed following this episode. But anyway, but if you did enjoy, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on the video to show your support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on this episode. What did you like? What didn't you like? Do you have any uh, feedback to what I've said in this video? Just let me know in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.